Hi folks. Uh, right, a quick watercolour, not much time today. Company for dinner and nor tomorrow. So Wednesday will be the next time I attempt to do anything. Which I hope will be an oil painting. I've prepared a couple of boards ready for that, only small. But I'm going to try to go back to brush painting but using a different brush cleaner called Zest It and uh, I've bought some some liquid or oil medium with alkyd resin uh, this stuff it, it's um, used with the oil paint it uh, helps it dry and as you know if you've been washing my oil paints the titanium white I use <coughs> contains alkyd resin which helps all the paint to dry much quicker Right, so here we are, watercolour, uh, cadmium yellow, light, uh, burn, uh, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, burnt sienna, just eight colours. And no greens. I try to steer away from greens with watercolours. It's just a matter of choice, really. You can, I can make adequate greens with the paints grey, the blue with the yellow, tempered with a bit of burnt sienna. Uh, the more colours you throw at a picture, the more complicated it gets and the more uh, mud you'll produce. It just doesn't work. You can't, if you can't solve a problem with uh, the colours that you're used to and all the mixes, well, think about that. I think it's a case of learn all the mixes that your paints will do. All the greens, the reds, the greys, the, the mauves, the purples, all the greens, the warm colours, the, the cool colours. You don't learn to do all this overnight and I wish it was that easy. We pretend it is but it isn't. We've, we've done a lot of it and the more you do the better you get. But the little kind of cup of tea most important thing. Uh, the most important thing is to uh, persevere and don't quit when you can't do it because well, we, none of us could do it when we first started and most of us are hobby painters we came to this late in life although I've spent thousands on, on this so-called hobby but I've got all my money back many times over not least in pleasure Okay, so it's sort of a, uh, a lake scene. Now I'm going to put in a, a, a raw sienna sky, or backgrounds of the sky. So let's just get that in. Just a light, light tint. This is wet in wet. I, I do prefer to work wet in wet, especially on this uh, 90 pound paper. It's a lovely paper. It's Winsor & Newton. And it's a cold pressed paper. Uh, we were asked uh, us Brits to what papers we prefer. Well, we're using this because it's cheap. It's supplied by Ken Bromley. Let's take those little bits off. And it's, it's cheap. And it's 15 by 11 sheets. Absolutely superb stuff for the for the price. Packs of 20 for about five or six pounds plus postage. If you buy enough, of course you. You get the postage for free. But in America you do tend to prefer the the heavier papers, but heavy papers like Archer's 300 are very expensive. Especially if you're not experienced and you're learning to do, just think of the expense of all those thrown away sheets. Although, don't throw your, your failures away, because when you get into oil painting and acrylic painting, you can use you can use use them for for that. You can prime them and put gesso on homemade gesso. I make my gesso with a bit of this uh, poly filler, multi-purpose shrink and crack resistant filler for all uh, repairs to your plaster and these screw holes and stuff. And I've I've primed these bits of hardboard 
which I've got to fit the 10 by 8 inch frame uh, with um, some dilute PVA glue which I keep in this bottle here uh, and just sprinkle the powder in and, and work it in with a, with a brush uh, clean the brush and, and then use a hairdryer to dry it right now we, we're going to do a bit of a spring day I'm making this up by the way we, we want a bit of blue it's a bit of ultramarine not too too heavy but I'm going to put some water in, so I'm going to put the uh, water in there. So but I like a bit of cloud, so a bit of light red and a bit of ultramarine for my cloud. Put that in. This all dries much lighter than when you put it on, so you've got to Make allowances for that. Let's get that across there. Okay, so we've got the elements. We've got a light background, but not white. We've got a bit of red to warm up the horizon. Some blue to show a, a bright day and a bit of cloud to add a bit of interest to the sky. So I'm just reclipping the paper. I'm going to give that a bit of a dry before I put the, uh, the trees in the background. My local river, river wonder. Because this paper takes a lot of water, it, I just dried the surface of it so that I can carry on painting. But you can see already that the paint, the, the paint, has started to diffuse. It's still damp, too damp. A bit more. Look how lovely and soft that those clouds are. You can always go over it when it's dry with a bit of dry brush, but I, I, well, you need to experiment for yourself to find out the best way to do that. You can have a mixture of soft and hard edges in the, in the skies. I like these. Right, so um, my, my little river Wandel is an industrial, or was an industrial river that's been very much abused over the 19th century, but it's uh, beautiful now. The uh, volunteers that work on it, so we'll, we'll put in a bit of bit of nice greeny blue going back into the uh, into the back into the back of the with with a bend in the river. Okay, let's just bring a little bit of that. Down. There's a bit of a reflection. Okay, so now we can close the river in and we we'll put in a bit of uh, warmer greens, a bit of cajello and a bit of bit of burnt sienna. Makes a nice, nice mix, such of the blue. And let's just put some of this in. See, you can see the dry brush now. And thanks for coming along here. And we want a bit of bit of shadow, so a bit of bit of red, bit of blue, a bit of yellow. It's a bit of darker stuff in here. Some good darts with the banks or a bank. Just 
just a bit of sienna, a bit of Payne's Grey, a bit of yellow in there. Now you can see how you need quite a bit of water on your brush as well because it won't dry brush if, if, if you've got it too weak. I have a bit of light coming up there. Now some good good dark now. Plenty of blue and greys in there, just... When you paint over wet paint, you need thick, thicker paint, otherwise it'll just bleed to nothing. Now this is where we want to get some dark shadow areas in the bank here, where the bank comes up from the river. Almost run out of it on the palette. Okay, we can put some uh, heavier stuff in there, in a mo. Let's go on to the other side now, and uh, this will be in the light. We'll put this one in the shadow. So, a bit of uh, blue, a bit of grey, a bit of green, a bit of yellow. But I won't make these so big because what you don't want really is a. Uh, Is one side competing with the other of equal value? You, it's not a good idea. A bit of shadow going. So it's quite quite easy, really, when you've done a few. A bit of dark in there, a bit of shadow and then just bring that bank over there. Here, let's pull the hairs out. Not yours, pull the brush hairs out. I know you feel like putting your hair out sometimes with all this. That'll, that'll dry, dry lighter. Right, we'll show a little bit of light coming through there now in the bank. Let's see, a bit of yellow. Just a little bit of reflection in there. Some lovely effects with this uh, paper.
need a cloth, very handy, so that you can take the excess moisture off your brush. A bit of light in there. And a bit of, a bit of dark in there. Any way you can make dark, Payne's Grey, Payne's Grey with red, Payne's Grey with ultramarine, Payne's Grey with all of it. Just drag that down there. <coughs> I'll put a little bit of warm in here. Warm green. See a lovely, that's just a little bit of burnt sienna with with that yellow. Oh. A really rich golden colour. Cheer it all up. And we can put a little bit of warm in here. Let's just uh, reclip this. We'll call this a simple river wandle scene, but, but it's not a masterpiece. Uh, okay, now I'll dry that off and I can go in with some trunks and branches and things. Swig of tea. Oh, I want to get a bit of a bank in there. And I'll just a touch of dark, so maybe fiddle. Dry brush in there. Put a bit of, a little bit in the in there. So, right, fair, fair bit of water on the brush. Bit of burnt, burnt umber. Bit of Payne's, a uh, bit of ultramarine. Give us a bit of a trunk colour. Sort of a, essentially a dark grey. And this about the glasses on. I can't see what I'm doing now. Oh, where are they? You can see a little bit now. I'm still trying to get an ideal angle for my paint with the camera. And use just the one easel for everything. I'm using a, a Mabeth. Box easel, like a, like a portable studio. You can get them quite cheap now. I paid a lot of money for this years ago. I think I was ripped off. But I wasn't online then. They can't rip us off anymore. Because we've got all the comparisons, haven't we? Now I'll just come down here with one here. Sticking up there, just fill those barren areas. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to do the same over here. Oh, I'm going to dry that because you can see what's happening. As soon as I've touched the moist paint or the moist paper, it's diffused. Right, 
like that should do. Back with the old paints grey, blue, umber, anything that makes it a good mark because this we're painting into the light all the time. So our trees are silhouettes. It doesn't make them any easier. Well I suppose it does really because you're you've got this contrast if if you're painting with the light against you you've got the lighter background but you've still got the light chunks the sort of lighter grey grey greens of your trunks but when you're painting into the light it doesn't apply everything's sort of silhouette Okay, let's get just some, some delicate ones here. See, the hay, hay would do everything, especially when they're a bit worn out, like this one. I won't put much detail in there, but I want to get some, some good darks now. Good rich darks, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a bit of Payne's grey, just get some grasses and reedy impression of. bury the bases of the trunks so they look as if they're actually growing out of the ground. The same on the other side. Oh, see? They're lost in the in the tangle of nettles and stuff. But try and preserve some of those lights. Just change that one a little bit. Okay. Now I'll clean the brush and a bit of a uh, bit of dry brush in across there. So a bit of a bit of ultramarine, a bit of red, get a bit of a sky colour there. Okay, we'll put in a few, no we won't, we'll leave that, let's uh, put in a couple of birds to link the sky with the landscape, find a rigger for that, we couldn't do that with a two inch or with the big large one around some hake. Now I've got a little blob there, so blobs become birds. I'll do. I'll put a signature on it. I don't, I don't always sign my book. I should do. You should do because even if you think it's not very good, someone will come along and say, oh that's good, how much do you want for that? If you're lucky. Now, as you start producing better and better water colours, far better than I can do, you will find that People will say they love it. How much? Do, how much would you sell that for? And you say, "Oh no, you can have it." Try to resist the temptation of that. You can give all your work away, and that's not not a good idea. Right. Okay. So let's put that on there. So there we. I've got. Uh, whoops. A simple watercolour. Let's just. Oh, let's just. Uh, there's so much paint on the on these uh, little catches that oh, I'll uh, clip it at the top. Oh, one at the other side. Oh. 
Okay, well there we are. Simple one for a Monday morning. Uh, but not that simple really. Where, where you've got these banks, I've not made a good job of this. I've got too much dark really. I mean, too much dark and not enough light. But we call it early morning, early morning, early spring morning on the Wandle. Uh, it says enough really. We've got background trees, cool colours, some more in front of that, just scrubby trees. And they're very simply stated, but plenty of colour. Have a go at these sort of things. They're, they're, they're not that difficult, but even if you're um, a, a, a beginner, intermediate, try them, waste some paper. But using a cheaper paper like this, remember this is a good quality paper. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye bye.